welcome to a starter and a chaser podcast on location at Market Garden Brewing Company. Bob Ross was actually a serial killer, and his paintings are the locations where he hid the bodies. Oh, God. Because, hey, welcome to another episode of a Starter and a Chaser podcast where we review one whiskey and one beer a week just for you. I'm professional brewer John Passo. I am whiskey connoisseur Joe Clark, and where are we at for our final episode of the Starter and Chaser Market Garden Brewing Company on location. Beautiful so this facility. is the fifth and final episode of our on location series for Market Garden. Uh, and what do we have for the starter to whistle pig, the boss hog. <laughs> And for the chaser, we have Market Garden's barrel-aged Joey Imperial Stout. Oh, Joe loves say? those. Oh, <laughs> yes, uh, it's, it's it's yours. Mine. I copyrighted it. Surprise! <laughs> right. They made it for me. <laughs> they made it for you. Now tell us about uh, a whistle pig. This is actually the second boss hog whistle pig we've had here on the show it so, is it is and if you want to check out that that episode of boss hog 4 link right, right here right here so whistle pig was started in 2007 in shoreham vermont uh, they have a 500 plus acre farm they use copper pot stills mm -hmm. um, they're all aged in vermont oak barrels and the wood is actually locally sourced in nice. the vermont area and the thing around. about vermont oak is because it's such a cold climate the the rings of the tree are closer thus the grain is tighter and tighter grain on oak means more flavor Ooh, interesting it's good yeah. to know I, I did not know that so this is boss hog five the spirit of moab moab so th it is a 13 year straight rye whiskey uh in calvados 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 Cass, uh that is a apple brandy um casting from uh actually another french region so i wonder if this is a theme with them these boss hogs and these they french casks french casks yeah, yeah could different be. types could of be. French casks. This is barrel number 71 and it comes in at 117.5 proof. Nice and light. Yeah, nice and light. <laughs> Finish <laughs> off the series here with a, a lighter one. 90 was hot, 117 is <laughs> light, all right. It's, it's opposite. Check it out, right? see what's it looking yeah. like. And I'll hold it up to the camera for our viewers that are on YouTube. By the way, if you're on YouTube watching us, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Leave us a comment. Nice and oily. Very Long oily. Legs. Beautiful, beautiful copper mixing in with uh, amber. Almost, almost ruby. Yeah. To some okay. of those yeah. edges. Sure. Boy, is that thick. Ooh. That's what she said. Wow. Wow for uh, straight rye. These are 100, you know, these are straight rye whiskeys. I mean, 100% rye. And uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, I think all the uh, whistle pigs are 100% uh, rye products. And it just has this cooking spice with a caramel punch to it, really heavy. And by the way, since we are- A little bit of red like apple it. on it. Since we are on location, you might hear some uh, background noises here. So sure. just a heads yeah. up. Nothing we can do about it, guys. Yeah. So red apple, did you say? Yeah, kind of a red apple smell to it. Huh. Being an apple brandy, is that the type of apple they're using as a red apple? I'm not or? entirely sure. Sometimes with Calvados brandy, you can use pear as well, but it's typically apple, and I'm mm. not sure what type. It's definitely, it's very caramely and fruity. Hmm. Definitely get some of the baking spices on it. Not a lot of the earthy, uh, grassy notes that I pick up with rice. This is very kind of more bourbon-like, actually. So let's let's dive into this, All John. Right. Prost. Let's do it. Hmm. Hmm. I didn't even swallow, and then it's got like it's like whoa. Oh yeah, tons of stuff going on. Wow. That is complex, and we're not even on sip number two. Well, that that was a nice coat. Let's go right back in and recoat again. Uh, on that I almost need to recover because that was a lot that <laughs> got thrown at me right there. I was not expecting that. Hmm. Rich. <laughs> rich, wow, almost syrupy brown sugar. 
a lot of that red apple note do coming in so on the edges right on the first sip i was going to say that keep going <clears throat> uh, no it's all right uh wow. it's back and forth <laughs> um baking spices for sure are you starting to understand before you say your next words why there is such a cult following to this absolutely yeah. i i get it uh, you know these are released very limited release um i think half of the price is because of the weight of the stopper i mean these things are just like obscenely heavy but um, five pound barbell uh sells out almost instantly and then is so hard to find uh afterwards so i i completely get the allure oh, and oh. cult following of these Man. holy shit this reminds me you know in the fall you get the uh the caramel apple on a stick yes bingo yes that is what this yes, is sir. in a glass 100 percent agree i really can't say much anything else other than baking spices and fresh caramel apple from like patterson's farm local to us so this is that in a glass i mean it's amazing mm. i oh man, we gotta start getting more of these things wow if you understand and agree with the cult following or don't agree with the cult following be sure to leave a comment below what you think oh. of the the demand that is the boss hog series of whistle pig Wow. It's got a little heat to it. It does, but not it, I just took like actually a pretty good sized gulp of it. 117.5. No, proof, actually, I mean. the heat, with the flavor being so heavy on this, very concentrated flavor, the, the alcohol, uh, kind of the heat note to it and the spices break that up for you because I think it would almost be overpowering on the palate without those other notes there. Absolutely. It's very Fantastic. well balanced. That's very awesome. well balanced. Yeah. Very well balanced. Well, I think I think that's about all we can say without yeah. like giving our full final thoughts on Too that. Too late. Which, which, okay, <laughs> all right. We'll save that for the end. But I think you know what we're going to say. But we will be back in a minute with the, the chaser. chaser. Welcome back to a Starter and a Chaser podcast. We are now back with the, the chaser. chaser. And for the Chaser, drum roll please, the fifth and final beer for our on location series at Market Garden Brewing Company. Market Garden Brewing Company's bourbon barrel aged almond joey. Now this is an imperial stout market garden, not that joey. We'll get into that in a minute. thinking about me? <laughs> <laughs> they knew you were coming. You're right. You know, they was Got a name this after this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of Mr. Early Times' his pen. <laughs> if you the, can see it. He's the almond joey. I got an early times pen. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Market Garden, by the way, for those that don't know, started back in 2011. There was four investors, including Andy Trevikram, who's the head brewmaster here. Nice. Andy goes way back in Cleveland history to uh, Great Lakes Brewing Company. He was a brewer there. He was a brewer at uh, Dogfish Head Brewing Company in Milton, Delaware. And then he came back to Cleveland to start Market Garden Brewing Company. Now, Almond Joey is named not after this Joey, but Joey at uh, the uh, brew pub. He's one of their brewers there. And it is a barrel-aged imperial stout that spent uh, five months in Jack Daniels barrels oh and then was okay. steeped in get this chocolate and co toasted coconut what do you mean steeped in so probably right after uh, they pulled it out of the barrels in the bright tank they they actually probably took a bag with the chocolate and the toasted coconut and steeped it in there or they added it to the barrel for a little bit right before they pulled it out of the barrel oh cool so okay. there's a couple different ways that you can okay steep something okay um so i think we should just show it off to the camera yeah. and nice dark i mean stout a light off tan head yeah oh yeah for sure <clears throat> what are you picking this up one's there? happy too which is could be you know late edition hops it's only 20 ibus so it's not super i'm happy. surprised i'm picking it up being um t being 20 ibus mm -hmm. definitely got a chocolatey malty note to it okay some earthiness to it which is nice hmm. kind of a little pilsnery back end to it really okay which is interesting for a stout actually interesting interesting so well 
No, nah, I don't think so. All right, let's go. No, we should. Drink. <laughs> yeah, we should. Go. So, All right. not a lot of the almonds on the nose or anything like that. Or well, it's not. It doesn't actually have almond right, in right. there, but you know, it doesn't so have Joey in there either. Hopefully, maybe Bob Ross isn't the serial killer. It's Andy. It's me. No. <laughs> Oh. I, I can't anymore. <laughs> You're just blown away by these stouts. <laughs> Joe has been on a stout kick since he discovered Imperial Stouts a couple episodes ago, and it's just been a... Their stouts <laughs> here are incredible. Mm. So when they say Almond Joey, think Almond Joy, because that is what this is in a glass. Yeah. This is wow. Almond Joy in a glass. Yeah. Chocolate, coconut, malt, roast, whiskey, barrel, vanilla. Fuck, it's delicious. Wow. What do you get? Definitely get, get the barrel notes on this one. I get Real the big. Jack Daniels too. Yes, yes. I, I absolutely taste Jack in this. Stole the words out of my mouth. Barrel mm -hmm. notes, hint of Jack Daniels in the background. Almonds, chocolate always seem to pull a little bit of the coffee roast out of these stouts mm -hmm. uh, in general. I don't know if that's intentional, just the way the just style the way of beer. Is. Yeah. Um, I love it because I, I like drinking coffee. So, you know, <laughs> so it's really good. Um, these guys really knock these stouts out big time, man. I mean, the flavors are just so well. This one's nice and layered like the last one. It's just, you just can peel through them in your mind as you're drinking this and just, <sighs> <laughs> it's it's speechless at this point. It's I, so good, I'm going for another one. Joe is really getting into beer, and we're kind of documenting a little bit of his journey here, and it really brings a smile to my face when he continuously has these things that just blow him away, and he's just like, God, I love this. Yeah, <laughs> it's and this is neat to experience. I always thought, like, when I would see somebody in the past pick up a beer, and it was like, tan head i'd be looking at them like like you're disgusting like dark beer what, what's wrong with you you know what i mean like and they're like this is delicious never judge a beer by its color yeah and it's just <laughs> this is it's like wow you were such a hater and that this is where you actually were meant to be mm. yeah. ironic eh yep and this is um the weight is always not a as amount of carbonation yeah, yeah. always you know, they, they're good at what they do what can i say you know the weight of this isn't like super super heavy no i mean it is got a, a heavier mouth feel to it sure. but to say super heavy i wouldn't go that far it's more kind of like creamy yeah the last then, one was more syrupy mm -hmm. this has definitely got a nice lighter mouth feel this would be one of those stouts that would be easier to drink mm -hmm. in warmer climate. Yeah, and by the way, what we're talking about was the last one. Uh, what we're referring to is their barrel-aged enforcer imperial stout, oh. which you can check out the episode oh. by clicking here. Right here. Um, man, man, I, I, I guess I guess we just got to swing back to this, the starter here. What are your final thoughts on the starter? And by the way, if really? you have had this one, be sure to comment below and uh, you can also support us on Patreon. The spirit of mwah, 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 five. <laughs> um, that is one of the most incredible tasting rye whiskeys I've ever had. It is rye and it is on top of that rice and spice sits a awesome caramel red apple. It's incredible. Get it. Drink it. Get a sample of it. Do whatever you got to do. Get it. <laughs> That's it. Caramel coated red apple with spice. I mean, this is incredible. And we were talking about it in between break. And for me, you know, it's got this overarching uh intense flavor of the the apple the caramel the spice but when you sit there and really start to think about it and, and analyze underneath all of that is just this beautiful complexity that's dancing around your tongue and uh, i see the hype i want yeah. i i want more want give me more take them all <laughs> now market garden barrel aged almond joey well, I mean, just because it has my name. I don't like the name Joey for me, but yeah, yeah. Man, two thumbs. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> it's, it's incredible. They're, they're yeah. very 
these guys excel at perfection on creating a beer. The carbonation content and, and the amount that's in there and how it feels is always perfect on every style of beer we've had here during this visit to Market Garden. We're definitely coming back and doing more styles of beer. Um, if their have stouts a... for me are to die for, and that's what I have to say on this. It's been fun watching this because at the start, he was like, wow, these light beers that they produce are incredible. This is for me. And now that we've sown dark, he's like, wow, these dark beers are incredible. They're for me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think he just really likes Market Garden Brewing Company. Yeah. As do I. The, the, yeah. the Almond Joy, uh, barrel aged Almond Joy, and it's is, Almond Joy. is absolutely 100% an Almond Joy in a glass. It is uh, uh, just the right amount of mouthfeel, right amount of carbonation, like Joe was saying. Um, very drinkable, but you can tell that you're drinking something of substance and oh, yeah. quality. And um, yeah, it's just very well done. And I, I've been really impressed by our time here at, at Market Garden. And you know, shout out to Andy and to Liz, who is uh, hosting today for us. Thank you very much for allowing us to come here and do an on location and uh, review some of your, your tasty, tasty beverages. It's, it's incredible, guys. Um, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this. And uh, I, I'm really humbled by the experience. Your building and your property is beautiful here. You're, I mean, look at this, it's it's absolutely, this doesn't, what you guys see behind us doesn't even do it justice. We're gonna take some pictures here and, and split them up between some of the episodes or maybe. You can check it out on yeah. our Instagram as well. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, if you wanna visit Market Garden Brewing Company, they are located in the uh, historic Ohio city, uh, part of Cleveland, Ohio on West 25th Street. Uh, they have a production facility that you can take tours of. They've got a gift shop and then a cross the way next to the west side market is their brew pub and microbrewery so be sure to check them out you can also check them out online you can check us out on all of the podcast networks be sure to hit subscribe on youtube we're on instagram and facebook and that has been our five count them not four but five part series on location at market garden brewing company in cleveland ohio we sincerely hope you enjoyed the yes, episode yes yes i really do and thank you again mark at Garden and your staff here today. It's been a wonderful experience and we will definitely be back. Thank you guys. See you next time.